Welcome to Courtside, everyone, a discussion of legal issues. This week, what to make of recent revelations that Donald Trump's Justice Department was electronically spying on members of the opposition in Congress, notably Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, and evidently spying on one of their children. They went to Apple, evidently, and tried to get information about these two and their electronic records, who they called, who called them, how long they spoke on the phone, and the like. Now, this story is moving incredibly fast. Literally, as I was recording this, we learned that the Trump Justice Department didn't just go after, evidently, Swalwell, Schiff, and others in Congress. They went after the White House counsel, Trump's own lawyer himself, his top lawyer, Don McGahn. And all of this was motivated by the fact that Donald Trump was aghast about reports in the newspapers documenting discussions between the Trump administration's high-level officials and the Russian government, including the ambassador Kislyak. And these are, of course, highly sensitive discussions. Trump was aghast, and he wanted those sources identified and prosecuted. And that's when the Justice Department evidently launched its investigation, including to Apple. This is a bombshell story. It's really significant. I mean, not to sound extreme, but this is how tyrannical governments operate. It's like Putin and Nixon sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, coming up with Trump and Sessions and Barr doing all of this stuff. And of course, it's early yet in the story. We have to see exactly what it holds. But it does suggest that one thing we've always suspected, which is that Donald Trump's public tweets and private paranoia and bluster, all of it created a sense in the administration that Donald Trump demanded abuses of power. And look, the gravity of the situation aside, what is more classically Donald Trump or Trumpy than targeting political opponents because they went on cable news against him? And look, while it might be at the end of the investigation that it turns out there was not a direct targeting of congressional opponents, it looks like there might have been. And of course, none of this would have happened if there wasn't so much crazy stuff to leak in the first place. These inquiries are not like minor ones, like what did Adam Schiff eat for breakfast or something. This is about, as I said, getting the numbers of everyone he called and everyone who called him. And the rationale, once again, as it always is with the Trump misdeeds, is about Russia. It's about trying to figure out who disclosed these secret meetings. That's, of course, why Jim Comey, the FBI director, was fired as well. And with Donald Trump, a lot of times the roads lead back to Russia and some sort of misdoing there. To me, the story is particularly significant from a constitutional perspective because this electronic spying was done not just to ordinary citizens, which would be bad enough itself, but done to Congress. Congress is, of course, a coordinate branch of government charged with oversight over the executive branch. And notably, when the shoe was on the other front foot, when Congress was trying to subpoena information from the Trump administration and get it, they cried and went to the courts saying that violated separation of powers and the like. Now it turns out we've learned that they secretly tried to do the other thing to the other branch and worse. Because electronic spying has some interesting rules behind it. You might think, like with Rudy Giuliani, when the prosecutors wanted to go and get his information, that a judge signed off on it. That's, of course, what did happen with Giuliani, because you were seeking documents. But when you seek metadata, um, which this was, who called whom and for how long, 2703 of our United States Code requires not a judge's order, but something far less of that, not probable cause to believe a crime has been committed and signed off by a judge. But you can do it in secret with a much lower standard. And that's evidently what happened here. This is extremely dangerous when you think about the powers of the executive branch being used in this way to spy on congressional opponents of the executive branch. The whole idea behind Madison and Hamilton's architecture of separation of powers is to prevent and that kind of thing and to enable and encourage congressional oversight over the executive branch. 
Now, for his part, it's worth noting Bill Barr denies any knowledge about this happening. Well, that, that's nice, I guess, but I will believe Bill Barr's rec recollection of these leaks just about as much as I believe his summary of the Mueller report. As for Jeff Sessions, the first attorney general for whom I guess these spying things happened during his watch, I guess that guy can't catch a break. He gets fired as the attorney general. He loses his Senate primary. He's now facing a potential subpoena from Congress to tell the truth about what happened here. And now, of course, Bill Barr is blaming him for all this. It's enough to make you feel bad for the guy until you remember that, well, he completely deserves it. Um, look, in the end, there's a non-zero chance that this was all a big mistake, that someone cast a wide net around a staffer and instead got data about Congress, members of Congress and their families. The wrong here is still, of course, profound. Instead of addressing this overreach, the Justice Department for three years has been issuing gag orders to hide this information from the American people and so far still can't explain itself. Justice requires accountability and transparency, no matter who's in charge. That's Courtside for this week. I'll see you next week.